What is good, you guys? It's Lifestyle from LifestyleThatDid.com, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a few tips and tricks to make your samples or your melodies sound more vintage. Let's get into it. All right, so earlier today, I was messing around with a few ways to kind of get the sample to sound more vintage that I was working on. I wanted it to kind of have that old feel and just kind of make it sound older. I didn't want it to be like necessarily wide and big with a lot of bass. I want it to be pretty narrow with some static in the back, and I just kind of wanted it to have an older vintage feel. So after a pretty long time I was able to come up with a really cool chain that I really liked how it sounded so I'm going to share this mix chain with you let's get into how to make these sound more vintage so the first thing I actually did was take this loop and I went into Edison and I reduced the bit rate of it so I came over here I go to run script and it is in effects and bit reduction so I'm actually gonna change this from 16 to 11, right? And it's gonna add this nice static behind it. It's gonna give it more of a vintage feel, but not necessarily anywhere we wanna be, but this is the first start. So now I can kind of hear that static behind it, right? That, that noise floor that got raised. So what we're gonna do is actually take this and this is gonna become the new loop that we're gonna use. So we don't need this one anymore. This is the one we're working on right now. So now it has a little bit more of a static feel to it, right? It's not as clean as it once was. So we're gonna actually link that into the plugin chain that I'm about to show you. All right, so let's kind of break this down step by step. So I'm, I merged it more mono because back in the day, things were kind of more centered, but I'm actually gonna take this out. I'm gonna turn off each plugin and we're gonna run down this step by step. So the first thing we have load in is the Fruity Convolver. If you don't know what the Fruity Convolver is, pretty much you can take reverb impulses, throw them in here. To explain this right now, it literally have to be its complete own video, but pretty much what the Fruity Convolver is, is you can take reverb impulses that you can get, that you can buy in packs, or you could download on free, or you can sample yourself, and pretty much it takes a small, quick snippet shot of the reverb tail of reverbs, and then you get to load it into the Convolver and actually use that reverb. So let's say you were in a studio and they had a really nice reverb, and you wanted to use that reverb when you got home, right? But you don't have the piece of gear. So you can make what they call an impulse of the reverb, and then take that home and actually drop it in. So let me kind of show you what I mean. So the one we're using right now is called right glass triangle and there's a bunch of free impulses out there if you just type in reverb impulses for free and you can find some cool ones uh, most of the time they have a license to it so just go ahead and read that but you take these and you just drop them in you're gonna see they're small files right but if I take this go ahead and press play this impulse and this reverb has a very long decay, right? So if I wanted to use this, but I didn't want that long decay, I can really just go in here and I can start to fade it out, right? And it'd be a shorter decay. Then I could start to mess with EQing. I can blend it in. There's so much you could do, but this is how I had it set up. This is the EQ curve I had. That's the impulse I used. I'll make a video where I speak all about Fruity Convolver, but it's really cool and you can really get some crazy reverbs out of it. So let's turn our dry back up and get our signal back to where it was. So that's the first order that we had going on. The second thing we actually did was put some saturation on it. Now, this is a paid plugin and you can use many different types of saturation, but I love this saturation because it has this wow and flutter effect and it has this noise. So if I go ahead and turn this on and turn the noise off, first we're gonna get our saturation by pushing in volume, right? Pushing in the gain, it's gonna start to saturate it and then with this flux knob, we can actually control how much saturation we want. And then we have this wow and flutter knob and check out, like this knob probably let alone makes me love this plugin so much. I'm gonna show you what it does. All right, so off. adds that wobble, that flutter to it, which is really cool. So we're gonna wanna keep that back to where it was. I know I'm messing with these settings, but it's okay, because this is pretty much the general part that I had set to. And then I'm going to actually take this noise, which stays on, and I want it to stay on, right? It doesn't come on when the sample's playing and off when it's not, it just stays on the entire time. So this is what I have set for that. So already here's what we have it sounding like. So here's before, after, right? Let's turn the noise down a little bit. Oh, that sounds good. The next thing we have on it is a parametric EQ. So a quick EQ, we took out a lot of the low end, a lot of the high end, and then I took out a bit of this like high-ish mid range because it had like this ting to it that I didn't want in there. And now that sounds like this. And this is really going to give us that vintage tone, right? A lot of the low end is taken out. The high end is muffled, so it's kind of dark, but it's also kind of thin. And that's kind of going to give us that vintage sound that we want. 
and that reverb's giving us a space, but I'm actually gonna go in here and kind of back this reverb off. So the next thing we have loaded in is Isotope Vinyl, a great plugin you can get things to sound vintage just by using it itself. But for what I wanted to do with this was nothing more than just use this year knob and give it a little bit, just a tiny bit of detune. So here's what it sounds like before, after. We have our warp depth pushed up a tiny bit just to give it a tiny bit of detune. And then I went with the year of 1960 and that cut out a nice amount of low end. And I really like how that sounded. And that's about all we're using with the Isotope vinyl. And then the last thing I threw on it is a chorus and I just used a tiny bit of blend on it. So if I turn it all the way up, it's gonna sound too much. I just kind of wanted to have it have some movement and some wobble in it, right? So actually I'm gonna turn this back down to where about 12% maybe. And then now we get it to sound like this. Now the last thing that I wanna do is actually kind of bring it more mono than stereo. Actually what I'm gonna do is take the stereo knob and just kind of merge it more towards the center and it's gonna give it this sound. All right, I don't wanna go full mono. Even though it sounds cool, I still want it to be able to be used on a record. So I'm kind of just gonna bring this back and probably go about 30 to 40%. It's a perfect amount. Let's go ahead and turn up the noise just a tiny bit. So now let's listen to it before and after. So here's before, it's gonna sound completely different. And let's try it on one more sample because I really like how this one sounds. So we're going to do the same thing, original, and then we're going to do the bit reduction and then the effects that we added. So here's the original. All right, so you can see how crazy it sounds on that Tori sample that I ended up loading in. I wish I would have used that one in the beginning because that one just ended up sounding so crazy and I really love how that came out. But that's what's cool with this chain, I can take any loop or any sample that I have and then kind of run it through it and see what I like and adjust from there. But definitely that Tori one works perfect. So if you did like those two loops and you're interested in a bunch of other loops, MIDI, a mixing course, and FLPs, I'll leave a link in the description to that bundle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. You guys can follow me on all social medias at Lifestyle Did It. Make sure to hit my site, lifestyledidit.com for everything else. Other than that, subscribe to your boy, push notifications, thanks.